Good evening, everyone. I'm Nancy Cox. And I'm Kevin Christopher. Thanks for joining us at 6. Police are searching for answers after the death of a woman friends say was well known around Manchester. 68 year old Carol Miller was found dead in a ditch by neighbors along Highway 421 just outside of downtown. Conroy Deluche has more in tonight's LEX 18 Big Story at 6. Hundreds of cars, buses and people pass through town every day on Highway 421. This morning, Roger Mills and Sandra were walking to Burger King for breakfast when they stopped. Well, I'm always looking down there, can them turtles and fish and stuff, yeah. so that's how come I noticed it. It was something they did not expect. I was training the day before with these clothes on me, so I know who it was. It brings cold chills all yeah. over me because I like poor chills. Yeah. Roger and Sandra say they found 68-year-old Carol Miller face down in the ditch. Police arrived on scene, as you can see in video captured by a security camera, at Sweet's Auto Body Shop from across the street. There's just so many people that's went by this morning taking their kids to school. So many kids on buses have went by and never even knew that there was a body laying there. The Clay County Coroner says it appears Miller stumbled over an embankment and into the ditch. It's because that's just not something you hear about every day in Manchester. Total shock, for sure. White called her a familiar face. Friends knew her as the little old woman who everyone knew. I've always been a friend. She's always been a good person, man. She sure has. Covering the news in Clay County, Conroy Deluche, LEX 18 News. State police are calling this a death investigation. The coroner says Miller's body is in Frankfurt for an autopsy and hopes that will shed more light on the cause of her death. It took 33 years, but thanks to new DNA tests, police finally know the identity of the so-called red-headed Jane Doe. She's the woman who was found dead inside a refrigerator in Knox County. With years of no good leads, her case went cold. But as LEX 18's Carolina Butchek reports, the people who cared for her grave never gave up hope. Just like every other tombstone here at Smith Cemetery, this one over here is surrounded by flowers. For more than 30 years, the community has taken care of this grave, despite not knowing who is buried here. Check it out. The tombstone says unknown. And until yesterday, no one knew who this was. She was just Jane Doe for 33 years, but she was treated like the rest of the people in the county. And now, thanks to DNA testing, Knox County's red-headed Jane Doe has her name back. SB Regina Black Pilgrim. She had two uh, necklaces on, a, a, an eagle pendant and a, a heart pendant. We had photographs of those. Jam Hall, Knox County's judge executive, remembers the crime well. I was training to be a deputy coroner at that time, and that's when this took place. It was a redhead who was found in the refrigerator. When they couldn't figure out who it was, the community stepped up and still held a funeral. You could come up here anytime and, and the grave's always decorated. There's always flowers on the grave. A woman then came forward last year and let police know she thought this Jane Doe was her mother. And she was right. I'm just glad that, that she did find what happened to her mother. But this cold case is not yet solved. The community still wants justice for SB Regina Black Pilgrim. Uh, there were several redheads who was missing during that period of time or had been found along the I-75 corridor. Uh, maybe a serial killer. Covering the news in Knox County, Carolina Buchak, LEX 18 News. A man accused of breaking into student housing and raping a Georgetown College student headed back to court this afternoon. Police say 33-year-old Cody Arnett slipped into a Georgetown College townhome on Military Street as the student slept and sexually assaulted her. Police say the victim fought back by grabbing Arnett's knife and stabbing him. She was able to get a knife at some point in self-defense. She did admit to stabbing Mr. Arnett multiple times. <clears throat> trying to get around the apartment. Um, <clears throat> this boy, Mr. Arnett, left the apartment where <coughs> he was met outside by Georgetown Campus Safety and Officer Holland, Georgetown Police Department. It was detained. Arnett has pleaded not guilty to charges of rape, burglary, and tampering with evidence. He has five prior violent offense convictions. A 35-year-old Lexington woman was killed in that terrible crash on I-64 last night in Clark County. The Clark County Sheriff says Angela McKinney was speeding just before 10 last night near the 104 mile marker when she lost control of her car, it went into the median and flipped, throwing her out. 
And that's when she was hit by another car that wasn't able to stop. The coroner pronounced McKinney dead at the scene. Well, a day that began with rain for many of us. That rain held on into the afternoon for areas, especially across the south. Had a couple little light showers even lasting into the latter part of the afternoon here, but those look like they've pretty much rained themselves out. You still might find a quick sprinkle there in the eastern corner of Harrison County. That's about it. We go to our future track here. Spotty showers, at least a chance. It's not a big one. Really, it's partly sunny now for the balance of the afternoon. Fog will become a big problem for us as we get you on into the night tonight. Some of that fog will be thick, so do be aware of that. You may want to plan your morning commute accordingly. Can't rule out a couple of showers trying to pop up again tomorrow afternoon. The chance will be small. That'll be with a partly sunny sky, and it looks to be another really warm day, and it's a really warm afternoon now. We're right around 80 most places, 79 in Lexington, 77 in Danville, but it is 81 in Frankfurt, 80 in Flemingsburg. Your day tomorrow, we are looking at the day beginning with fog with temperatures running in the mid 60s, upper 70s at lunchtime on our way to a high in the mid 80s again. We'll talk about how long this October heat lasts in a couple of minutes. OK, Bill, thanks. A school health nurse for the Lexington Fayette County Health Department has been placed on administrative leave following an incident involving an autistic child. Yesterday, we brought you the story of a Lexington mother who says her 11 year old son was having a meltdown at Tate's Creek Middle School and refused to get off the gym floor. She says a teacher and school nurse dragged the boy until they could get him to the resource classroom, leaving bruises and scratches on his back. Fayette County school officials are also investigating. A disabled Richmond woman is extremely upset after her custom made bike was stolen from outside her house. LEX 18's Alexa Helwig talked with the woman who not only used the bike for herself, but also for charity. Amy Chrome gets around day to day in her electric wheelchair. She was born with cerebral palsy. The disability limits her mobility, but this bike her brother bought two years ago makes her feel able instead of disabled. I use it for exercise. I also use it every year for a charity event I do called Angel on the Move. Amy's annual charity bike event at Legacy Trail raises money and awareness for disabled veterans. And yes, she biked nine miles this year. But yesterday, this cherished possession went missing from her front porch. It was like someone with my heart and stomped on it. Yeah. Because that bike was basically the only thing what I feel it's the only thing I can use just like everyone else. Amy's caregiver Reginald says this bike made her feel special. For someone to take that away is a slap in the face. When they felt they were able to do something, now you've disabled them again. Tonight, Amy has one message for the person who took away a large piece of her happiness. What were you thinking? Why? You have no right to take something that isn't yours. I want my bike back. Covering the news in Madison County, Alexa Helwig, LEX 18 News. Nearly half the staff from Kentucky River Foothills based in Richmond will be out of a job. 142 people will be affected by the layoffs. The community based organization provides services to eight counties, including Clark, Estill, Garrett, Jackson, Laurel, Madison, Powell and Rock Castle. Better job news here. More than 12,000 Amazon employees of Central Kentucky woke up to some really good salary news today. LEX 18's Michael Burke is at the Lee's Town Road Fulfillment Center with what they can expect and the impact it will likely have on the Commonwealth. Amazon has announced that it is raising its minimum wage and that is going to enforce other employers around Central Kentucky to step it up. It's a major shift and it is a necessary shift. And it's a shift that could have a positive impact on Kentucky's economy. People making more money will have more to spend. And those at Amazon making less than $15 an hour are about to get a raise. Lynn Breaker of Remedy Staffing says unemployment is at a historic low, but the turnover rate is at staggering highs. People jump from job to job for a dollar more an hour. So Amazon is taking a proactive measure to retain its good people, essentially saying, We are going to pay what these people are deserving of and what they um, need to be paid to live a good life. 
And it all comes as no surprise to anyone who's been studying recent job market trends. And we actually have been of a service to our customers, telling them this is coming down the pike. I mean, we are partners with our organizations and we have told them you can't stay where you're at or you are going to drown. Amazon didn't make anyone available for comment, only confirming that the wage increase will take effect on November 1st. That leaves 54 shopping days until Christmas. Good timing. Covering the news in Lexington from the LEX 18 Mobile Newsroom, let's send it back to you. Perfect timing indeed. Thanks, yeah. Michael. A bride-to-be and her groom are ditching the traditional gift registry. Instead, they're using their big day to help make a difference for teachers and students. How they're doing that is coming up next.